More than 80 kids from 10 high schools in southern Idaho rolled into the Living Waters Ranch in Chalice for an intense two-day natural resources education event called the Idaho Envirothon. The Idaho Envirothon is a competitive event held every April. The winning team gets an all-expense-paid trip to the North American Envirothon. This year, the team from Weezer High School captured the state crown. Awesome! Excited! Excited. Yeah. I think we were really that together as a team. Yeah. yeah, we've all known each other for a while, so it's been easy to work with. And, and everyone listened really well. Yeah. So with the teamwork, we were able to get through most of the places. Months before they even arrive, high school teams prepare by studying up on soils and land use, aquatic ecology forestry, wildlife, and current issues. This year, it was invasive species. It's an extracurricular activity, much like participating in athletics. The kids have to carve out time outside of the normal school day to meet as a team and learn about the issues. Yeah. Yeah. It's really hard to find. Yeah. Chris Banks, chairman of the Idaho Envirothon Committee, explains the purpose of the event. Uh, Envirothon to me is an opportunity for these kids to come and learn about issues facing our natural resources, uh, learn about those topics, uh, better, to better kind of prepare them for the, the future. It's a way that we prepare the youth that are our leaders of tomorrow uh, so that maybe if they're in a public office we don't have the juggernaut that we see uh, maybe in D.C. The Living Waters Ranch in Chalice is a perfect location for the event. The facility offers an opportunity for the kids to be in the water, for the kids to get into the trees. Um, we have a soils pit that we have dug for them, and it also offers a lot of uh, great housing opportunities. We have bunks for the kids, and that, that works really well. When the students arrive at the Idaho Envirothon, they better know their stuff because everything happens really fast, and they're forced to think on their feet with very little time to think or prepare. For example, on the first day of the competition, the student teams are whisked from one natural resources station to the next. They hear a 30-minute presentation from a natural resources expert in, say, wildlife, and then they have 15 minutes to take a test on the topic. Then the horn sounds and they move on to the aquatic station or the forestry station for a short presentation and test. Each test is worth 100 points or 500 points total. But that's not all. After dinner on the first day, the kids are given a challenging hypothetical natural resource problem to solve. The pressure is on because they have to give an oral presentation on their solution the next morning with poster board visual aids, but it's not easy. Where do you start? That's who you're trying to figure out. You got it all figured out? Kind of. We're trying to save the world. We're figuring it out. Uh, <laughs> the oral presentation is worth up to 100 points, but it's the biggest challenge when it comes to critical thinking and problem solving. The natural resources problem this year focuses on the closure of invasive species check stations in a fictional county in southern Idaho because of budget cuts. The students have to figure out a way to keep the stations open with other funding sources and protect several popular lakes from getting contaminated with quagga mussels and other invasive species. We're trying to figure out how we're going to get the funding yeah. for it all to work out in the first place. Okay. That is, that's our biggest choke point right now. <laughs> if someone comes to a boat huh? check yeah. station and they've got zebra snails, <laughs> mussels, <laughs> mussels, what do you do? Do you just say, go home? <laughs> The following morning, a team from Jerome High School gives their first presentation on the invasive species problem. Our main focus is the quagga mussels. Because they have no natural predators, they're, they're out of control and it's super hard to keep all of the pipes clean. The common carp is one of them. And some ideas for prevention from keeping it from spreading any farther than what we have already. We plan on trying a carp derby tournament to reduce the carp population, and that's where the fish will be jumping out of the water, and you can either net them or shoot them with your bow, whatever you prefer. Is you it scary? I think with just... any public speaking, you get this like nervous rush, and so you're like, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> 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 and you just get your so. just like, 
And then you like get into it and hit the strike and you just like have a sudden confidence boost and you don't feel those nerves anymore. You just right like on. take off and run. It was challenging, but it was like a very current issue right now. Right. And especially with the quagga muscles and all the water issues that are going around, it sort of kind of fits right into that. And so the quagga muscles is like super big right now. After lunch, the top five teams that scored well in the preliminary oral presentations get a second chance to hit it out of the park. Invasive species. We all kind of know what they are, but very few people actually know how big of a threat they can pose to local economy and environment. All five of the team members are required to speak, with 12 minutes max. Weezer High used an MC approach with four speakers covering a specific part of the plan. This is our team captain, Maggie. I'm Grace. This is Philip, Kelsey, and Allie. This is our plan to avoid invasive species in the reservoirs, and Maggie will give a little bit of background with the map. But this year they only got funding for one inspection station coming into the county, so we're going to take the money that they got and distribute it between all five of the reservoirs. I want to try and prevent the invasive species from coming in. And to do this, we thought that we could put kiosks at every uh, boat check station to try and inform the people that are coming in to go to the reservoirs. So they would have the name of the species and the picture of them so that the people would know what they are. As far as the boat checking itself goes, it's going to stay the same for the most part. The reservoirs are going to be protected almost without flaw, at least by boaters. And we are excited about that system. And even if it does get in, it's almost a great opportunity for students to learn. Do all we can to protect the environment around that and not let it spread to any more of the reservoirs in the area. In the end, the Weezer High team prevailed. They had to score high on all the natural resource stations and score well on the oral presentation too. We're also not judging these kids on whether they give a right or wrong answer. We're looking at how well they address all the disciplines. We're looking at how well they work as a team. And then it's really great to see these kids stand up and be able to have those kind of speaking skills that, that you don't see in every program. You know, it's like a, a, a science program and a speech and debate program kind of all rolled into one. They have worked hard they all have. year just on everything that they do, and that's just who they are. They're all good students. Here, this is my fourth I've judged now in the final round. And every year I keep thinking, boy, we've, we've hit the bar. And every year the bar just seems to get moved higher and higher, and it's amazing how quickly they can put together a presentation that they were given to cold turkey. And all of a sudden they come up with something wonderful. You know, you see this and you just marvel saying, wow, you know, maybe our, our American society, our local uh, group, our people have a chance with this bright, great minds that we are producing. You say, hey, there might be hope for us after all. Ultimately, the goal of the Idaho Envirothon is to pique student interest in natural resources in hopes that they might pursue it further in college or even as a profession. Two women who judged this year's Envirothon actually participated in the event as high school students some years ago. One of the great things about Envirothon is it really um, allows you to develop the power of thought by engaging in critical thinking. You have to really think about how um, ecology and natural resource management um, fits into soils and wildlife and aquatics and forestry and whatever that current issue is for that particular year. And meld all those together. Looking back now in my, my, my current profession, all of those things I deal with on a daily basis. Um, as a rangeland management specialist, I need to know about soils and, and forestry and water quality and, and wildlife. All of those things mesh together. And so I definitely um, feel that Envirothon and everything that we learned then definitely set the, the groundwork for what I do today. 
Sarah Baker, a University of Idaho Extension educator in Custer County, says that her experience in Envirothon set her up for success in college and in her career. So the skill sets that we learned uh, in Envirothon were huge. I know, I remember when I went to college, I started off at CSI and then later transferred to the University of Idaho. But my freshman soils class, I was like the smartest one in there because I'd already learned all this stuff in Envirothon. And after uh, moving up to the University of Idaho and then graduating, um, I still use those skill sets that we learned. And not just the technical stuff you learn about wildlife or soils or aquatics, but uh, you know, the problem solving skills and uh, you know, communicating with others and standing in front of people and, and giving presentations. Um, all of those kind of skills that I learned in Envirothon have helped me immensely and throughout college and, and in my career now. For more information on how to put together a team for the Idaho Envirothon, go to the website to gather background materials and get signed up. You will also need to work with your local soil and water conservation district to get sponsored in the competition. There's a district in every county of Idaho. In two years, there will be an extra incentive to participate because the North American Envirothon will be held in Pocatello, Idaho. In the International Envirothon that's going to come to Idaho in 2018. Um, some of us have been here long enough, we've been through an international event and we shake our heads that we're doing it again, but it is a great honor and we're really pleased to be able to do it. And one of the things that we're trying to do is grow and get more teams and more schools involved. And again, that, that really falls back to the Soil Conservation Districts to be able to accomplish that.